Hello everyone, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. I am here with a different type of video, a little bit of a chatty video because it's new planner season time where a lot of reveals for new planners are coming out. People are trying to consider what they're going to order. It's Hobonichi reveal season. So there is a lot coming out right now and it's making a lot of people, including myself, try to think about what I want for 2025. But there's also a part of me that is thinking it's only August, but I like to have things, we're planners. We like to have things set up and ready to go before the year actually starts, you know, months in advance. And I think last year when I did my pre-order with Sterling Inc, my planners didn't come until about late November. So I wasn't setting up until December, which felt really late to me. So this year, I think having this written down will be helpful for me so that I can figure out really which direction I'm going for, where I feel there is going to be a change, where I'm okay with staying with what I have, and then I'll take you through each of these. All right, so I'm going to zoom in so you can see all of my thoughts here on paper. So I wrote these down before filming this video because I wanted to look at what I'm currently using and thinking about what it is that I need for next year. So first thing I wrote down was my A6 five-year journal, which I have loved. And this has been in use since 2022. Let's remove that clip here. And I am in my third year and it is working so well for me. And I'm really loving it. I'm in a good rhythm with this. I do not need another five-year journal next year. So this will stay exactly the same. This cover, for those who are thinking about it, I bought this cover off of Etsy from, I believe it's One Leather Market BC. I will include a link in the description below. But because I only use pen in this, it's not going to get super fat or chunky. And I'm absolutely okay with that. Now that I'm in my third year of it, I really love looking back at what I've written in previous years, what was important to me then, what's important to me now. And I think it's such a great practice. It can be very intimidating at first, but this for me is just writing little snippets about the day. It doesn't have to be deep thoughts about my day. It really is just a synopsis of the day. The weather, gosh, it's so interesting <laughs> looking back at the weather and even things like gas prices I keep in here. And this has worked really well for me and I'm going to continue using this. Now, I did write into here, I'm going into year four, so I don't need any change. But year five, there is going to be a space issue with the Hobonichi. Because if you look at year five, I normally write my, or the weather, and then one thing I'm grateful for. But in year five, there really isn't the space to do that. I'm not thinking about it right now. It's a future Karina problem, but I'm sure this time next year, I'll be wondering what am I going to do? <laughs> so it's not something I'm going to be worrying about now, but this time next year, it'll be a different situation. So my A6 five-year journal for now will not be changing. Now, my A5 journal, what I'm currently using it for, where is my journal? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I did the thing where I'm like, where is my journal? But it is actually currently in front of me. So my journal, my monthly, I use for social media planning, but also planning out what stickers I'm using. I love this. I used to have a whole planner just for social media, but now it, I love having it all in one spread like this. And I do use it pretty well. And it's something that I functionally need now to plan out my videos and content and things like that. So in terms of the A5 journal, so the Sterling Inc. A5 Common Planner, that is working really well for me. Now my weekly will also have no change because I really do like the format of the Sterling Inc. Common Planner. I love the format of the vertical. I really like how neutral this all looks, but also it's light enough that I can change the formatting if I want to. Not that I do, but I mean, I cover up the dates and don't always go with the hourly lines and that works for me. So that won't be changing. And then where are we here? And then the dailies, I do like having an undated grid. And I like that 
the whole page can be used for journaling and decorating. Whereas with the Hobonichi, I felt a little bit restricted with the fact that the date was up here and there were quotes at the bottom. It really took away a lot of the space, but also I like the two column format that I'm currently using with my daily. So it works out really well for me. The only thing with the current setup is that I've discovered that in book two of the common planner, there are only enough pages for the daily journaling. There is not enough for the currently set up page or the monthly currently page, if that makes sense. There was enough for that in book one, because technically there are less days in the first half of the year than there are in the second. So that's my only thing. I think book one, I'll be fine to do those monthly currently pages plus the dailies. Whereas in book two, it's just gonna be the dailies, which actually is fine because the main reason I was using those currently pages was for my currently inked, as well as the books that I've read. And I have been able to, I guess, repurpose my yearly pages because I wasn't using them for habit tracking. Now I can use them for books that I've read as well as my currently inked. So really problem solved not a huge deal for me to put my currently inked here and my books read here versus having a separate currently page that is next to my daily pages. So that is fine. Really, my whole A5 journal is not going to change from the Sterling Ink Common Planner. I'm the type of person where if it's working, why change it? And I'm pretty happy and satisfied with what I currently have. I think if I hadn't discovered the Sterling Ink Common Planner, I'd still be using Hobonichi because I think I'm pretty lazy when it comes to researching and doing all of that stuff to try to find a new planner. So this is actually a stretch for me. So for me, if most of it, about 90%, 95% of it is working for me, then I'm not gonna do much to change or research new planners. The next thing, however, move this out of the way, is my passport planner. So my passport planner is currently in my wallet, which is upstairs. But basically, I use this as my on the go planner. I love it. It's cute and tiny. And I basically only use it when I'm out and about writing appointments and things like that. So it's not a planner that I use daily. I hardly ever decorate it. So there's no pressure for me to make it pretty, make it aesthetically pleasing for YouTube or Instagram. It really is a functional planner and I love it for that. But I've discovered that I only need the monthly and the weekly and I feel bad for wasting so many pages in the passport planner that come in the back. So what I am considering for 2025 is the Sterling Inc. Passport Booklets, where I'll have one booklet for the monthlies and one booklet for the weeklies, and that's it. I think that's how they come. I need to do more research on that. But I'd be happy with something that just had the monthlies and the weeklies, and that's all I need for my on-the-go planner. And there's also the Aura Estelle Passport Booklets. They come in a pack of four. I need to do a little bit more research as to what would probably suit me better, but I'm also not in a time crunch for these. A lot of these I'm not in a time crunch for because I mean, it's only August, but I'm still considering what would work best for me. And Sterling Inc, she hasn't, Catherine hasn't released what her booklets are gonna be yet. So that's still all up in the air. But I do know that with my passport planner, I don't want a whole big planner. I would just be happy with undated booklet because I wouldn't be wasting as much paper that way. The last planner for 2025, and this is the one that requires the most research and the most consideration. I feel like I need a weekly and an undated daily with, or like grid note pages in the back. But the thing is, I started a new job at the end of June and I'm currently in training. I will be out of training mid-September and then I will have a better idea of how I'm going to use my work planner come probably October or November. So I'm still not sure as to what I wanna use or how I wanna use it. I've been considering a bundled option where the everything in a month is in this, is all together in a planner. So you have the monthly, weekly, and then the days for the weekly all together rather than all the monthlies, all the weeklies, and all the dailies bundled like that. It's 
dated, if that makes sense. And I know there's a few planners that are like that, um, but I also don't want to be restricted to a certain number of pages for each week. So the bundled option may not work for me. I'm also thinking about the Paper Test A5 Yearly 2.0 or the Aura Estelle daily week on eight pages. But again, that one, I would be restricted to a certain number of pages per week, and I don't really want to be restricted. So, oh, and I'm also looking at the Hobonichi A5 Han. And I love the whole book bound thing, and I would definitely go back to a Hobonichi just for work. Um, because it definitely has all that I need, I don't mind the dated pages there, but I think this is the thing. I'm unable to really determine what I need until about October or November because I'm not in the routine yet for work. I'm still in training. I don't know what my proper day-to-day -day is going to look like once I'm out of training. So I need to take that into consideration. So thinking about my planners for 2025, what is the conclusion that I have come to? My A6 five-year journal, still good. Don't need to change that. The year five spaces, issue will be a Karina problem, a future Karina problem. My A5 journal, I probably won't change this. I will probably purchase another Sterling Inc. A5 common planner vertical in two books because it's worked well for me and I have had no issue with it. I've figured out the only thing that was, I guess, bugging me about the planner and I found a solution for it. So really it's a non-issue. Uh, and then the passport planner, I need to wait until Sterling Inc. come out with their passport booklets to make a proper decision. And then with work, it really depends what my schedule and what my day-to-day -day is going to look like in October or November. So really, the only two that are more dependent on what is being released and the only two that are going to probably be changing are the passport and the work planner. And I'm okay with waiting to see what comes out and what my needs are at that point. All right, that was very chatty. and. I'm glad that I had this to go by because this is a very good reference. If you are trying to figure out what you need for 2025, writing it down like this is really helpful, but also there are so many smaller shops that are coming out with planners now. It's fantastic because there will be something out there for you. And even if you buy something and realize it's not for you, that's okay. You've eliminated one thing from the whole list of planners that are out there and you're just curating the list of what will actually work for you. So there is no, I don't think there is any bad purchase per se, because you're still, when it comes to planners and planner piece, you find what works for you in that point of your life. Planner piece is not an end destination. It's an ongoing journey. Okay, now that is everything. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below or let me know what you're thinking for 2025. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please leave me a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a great day.